Good Sunday morning, everybody. Happy Easter for those of you who are celebrating, and also a very blessed Passover to those of you who are of the Jewish faith and celebrating for today. We've got, again, some fairly quiet conditions for now. Unfortunately, we may be looking for the possibility of some more rainfall heading our direction as we get into the rest of the day. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll take a look at Storm Tracker 3S radar and also make certain that we are seeing, again, the potential for maybe some stronger storms heading our way as we get into the course of the next couple of days. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in for this morning. Very much, uh, very big thanks to the News Channel 3 engineers uh, making certain that our microphone was repaired for this. Nice to have it back again and working properly here. So I hope everybody can hear me uh, well enough for this morning. So nice to have the equipment back up and going on this. And uh, thanks a lot. The engineering staff does not get nearly enough praise for all the hard work that they do around here. So thank you guys very much for getting that taken care of. If you're in the Mid-South area, again, West Tennessee, North Mississippi, or back into around areas uh, close to Eastern Arkansas and in and around that location, please drop your location and your weather reports into the area. If you're from outside the Mid-South, let us know where you're from. Again, around the country or around the world, we don't mind. And in just a little bit, we'll take a look at some of your weather pictures here and there. And we'll also take a look at see about what the possibility is for the maybe the potential of some stronger weather coming our direction as we go into what's left of the holiday weekend. So again, stronger weather possible with thunderstorms as this front moves on through, but we're just not looking at too much at least right now. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Here's what it looks like again for the next several hours. Just a nutshell forecast for you coming up. And if you can't stick around for the whole forecast, check out the blue bar scrolling down toward the bottom of your screen. You can see again the forecast information moving its way on through here. Or to get more of our forecast, you can go to this website to get this information right here, our seven-day forecast, everything available at wreg.com slash weather. More clouds than anything else. There could be some peaks at the sunshine, but I think it's more clouds more than anything else out there for today and scattered showers across much of the area. So not looking all that sunny. It'd be nice if we had the weather we had yesterday for Easter Sunday, but unfortunately this time around it just does not look too good at this point in time for anything involving clear skies out there. And the farther north you go, the better chances of rainfall and more cold weather setting in, including some snowfall, not for the Mid-South. I did not say snow for the Mid-South. I want everybody to make certain that they heard me, and that's why I'm doing the finger waggle at this point to make certain everybody is paying attention on this. So thank you very much on there. From the Ole Miss campus, a little bit of sunlight making its way on through. Ventress Hall in the foreground, the student union back toward the area in the trees, and the trees of the grove off to the south. And looking at, again, a little bit of blue skies, but not doing too bad out there. Mostly overcast around Germantown, Poplar Pike, along the railroad tracks, Germantown Parkway, and the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, easily visible. It's cool. It's not exactly bitterly cold, but it is nicely chilly out there for this morning. Got temperatures back into the mid-upper 50s, and winds occasionally breezy at about 6 miles per hour at this point in time, and more chances of rainfall out there for the time being. Uh, raining in Ripley, Tennessee, Elvis Etheridge. Thank you very much uh, for that report, and thank you to everybody else for the Easter greetings uh, checking on through right now. Edie Young, Strayhorn, Mississippi. What do we got here? 55, overcast and light wind. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And Cloudy Crystal Cackler in Lakeland. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in for this morning. Live view of I-40 and Witten Road. So far, traffic is moving along pretty well. We don't have anything in the way of delays or any problems, according to TDOT or any of the other DOTs around the Mid-South area. So that's good news for travelers. Likewise, most of the roadways are dry. But unfortunately, we still have more of those showers out there. And you can see some of that right now on Storm Tracker 3S. Moving through northern Shelby County, Tipton, Lauderdale County is picking up some more of the heavier showers. And some of that is going right over I-40 between Brownsville, Hillville, north of Fayette Corners, right along the I-40, I the State Highway 76 area. Everything moving to the east at about 25 miles per hour. We're not detecting anything at this point in the way of thunderstorms, but north of the area up around north of I-40, we could see a rumble of thunder possible later on today. We're just not looking at all that much at this time. We're also seeing a little bit more in the way of rain 
redeveloping over central Arkansas, Little Rock, Pulaski County, down to around Hot Springs. Showers developing and moving a little bit closer to us, and you can see some of that activity right into the Mid-South. St. Francis, Lee, and back toward Phillips County. More scattered showers taking place here, and we'll be looking for more of that activity as we go throughout the rest of the morning. Off and on, it's not going to be a deluge, but I would go ahead, and unfortunately for Easter Sunday, it would be nice for sunny skies, but I would take the umbrella with you just to be on the safe side. Now notice kind of a stretched out diagonal flow to all of this. All these showers are forming along a cold front. It's not a monster system. It's not that strong. In fact, it's relatively weak. There's not that much to this thing. But over the next couple of days, it's going to kind of wobble back and forth across the area. And then eventually into tomorrow, it's going to get a lot warmer, which means we've got a warm front on the way. This, as of right now, is slowly dropping into the Mid-South. It's going to turn kind of stationary, wobble back and forth. And then it's going to go back to the north as a warm front, as all that warm air arrives. And that That'll be in advance of our next storm system, which is way off to the west, but heading our way. And that's where we get the possibility for some stronger weather later on. Now, right in here, we could be looking at the potential, again, for some thunderstorms taking place. I'd say from roughly Cape Girardeau, Poplar Bluff, down to just north of Little Rock and Conway, right along that front is going to be the best possibility where the atmosphere is going to be irritated enough to possibly stir up some thunderstorms. But south of that, so far, we're just not seeing much of anything else at this time. Now, if you're heading north, this is important because the cold air north of this front, if you take a look back to the north and west, it doesn't look like much right now. And let me get rid of the satellite information here for just a second. That's not satellite data. That's snow over portions of Nebraska, back around Kansas, back around my dad's hometown of Hiawatha up that direction, probably getting some snow flurries right up there and right on into northern Missouri and southern Iowa. There could be some accumulation with this. Again, not for the Mid-South. Just want to make certain everybody's up to date on that. If you're heading between St. Louis and Kansas City, Columbia, Boonville, Jeff City, Kirksville, Quincy, Trenton, you may wind up with uh, some accumulation up there, and that could mean some slick conditions. Again, if you're traveling, this could be a bit of a problem up that direction. We're not seeing a lot of accumulation right now, but north of I-70, if you are heading this direction, again, well away from the Mid-South, well on down that way, we may see that possibility of some more snow showers coming on through and a lot more behind that. So that could be some travel problems well away from us. Not too bad right now. Again, temperatures back into the mid to upper 50s on live real-time WeatherNet 3. So we do have a nice start to the day. Dropping a little bit on the temperatures with that cold front, but we should be bouncing back upwards again into the next several hours. Now, again, rainfall chances looking, again, fairly light out there for now. Again, making its way down to the south, back to the north, wobbling that direction throughout the rest of the day. A little cooler, closer to that cold front, much milder ahead of it. So the closer you are to the cold front, Dyersburg, back down to Forest City, Blytheville, into around Harrisburg, Manila, you may see some cooler temperatures, but Corinth, Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, back to around Hernando and Coldwater. You're going to be pretty mild south of that front. We'll be looking for temperatures back in the lower 60s. Now, again, looking back to the north of us, that's where we start to see the potential of maybe some rain mixed with snow as far south as Arnold, Herculaneum, Poplar Bluff in that area. So tonight, that could be just a bit of a concern. So something to think about if you or anybody you know is traveling in that direction. So please keep that in mind out that direction. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in, and happy Easter to everybody who's checking in for today. Chances of rain will continue through midnight right on into tomorrow morning. And that means possibly some wet roadways right about the time we hit News Channel 3 daybreak. So stay tuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on that. Now, today... Severe weather, not seeing it, but we are seeing possibility of some thunderstorms north of I-40. This forecast is several hours old. This should be updating in about the next 90 minutes, give or take, from, again, about 8.15 or so for this morning. So thunderstorms north of I-40, that should be about it. As we get into tomorrow, that warm front lifts northward, so the unstable air will be back to the north of the Mid-South and just seeing, again, some thunderstorms possible, but that's really going to be about it at this point in time. Uh, Amy Autry, no April Fool about the weather. No, I don't do that. As I know a lot of weather people who did do that over the last several years, but I don't joke around where weather's concerned. 
You can call me boring if you want to, but again, I think that's the best to kind of keep the jokes out of the weather department, if at all possible. Just me. If anybody else wants to do it, that's up to you. Now, into Tuesday, not joking about this either. When you see a forecast like this showing up about three days ahead of time, this is something to pay attention to. Again, panic never helps anybody. I don't hype the weather. I let you know what the potential is going to be. I'm a professional. I don't hype anything. And this is what we are seeing for the potential of stronger storms coming up later on this week. Tuesday, a slight risk category. The yellow polygon indicates where the highest threat of severe weather is going to be. And that's going to be almost all of the Mid-South, including the metro area. So please keep that in mind for later on. What are we looking for? At least damaging winds, maybe the possibility of some large hail. And at this time of the year, this is the worst of the worst for the seasons for severe weather between late January and about early May. This is the time where we can get the worst storms here in the Mid-South in this area of the country at this time of the year. So we could see, unfortunately, the possibility of isolated tornadoes. I know a lot of you don't like to hear that, but we need to be able to tell you that so you can get prepared for what may happen. Getting batteries in the weather radio, getting a plan ready to go, making certain your kids know what to do at school, making certain that you have a safe place at home, work, your place of worship, wherever. So if anything does happen, you're ready to go for this. Now, this forecast will change over the next several days. So keep it tuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on what we may be seeing out there. Lower 60s, this forecast forecast, again, mainly meant for the metro area, Shelby County and Memphis. It'll be cooler north of I-40, a little warmer to the south of I-40, but mainly right about the lower 60s for Memphis and Shelby County with showers today, showers into tomorrow. Could be a rumble of thunder, but I'm thinking just mainly showers at this point in time. And then on Tuesday, this is where we see the stronger weather possible. Could be some thunderstorms early in the morning, warmer more unstable air coming on through. And the best possibility, I think, for right now is going to be Tuesday afternoon and evening from lunchtime through about dinner time. Could be some outdoor events get canceled at school, things like that going on. So please keep that in mind out there for right now. Uh, almost 80 on Tuesday and a freeze Wednesday night. Oh boy, Jennifer Harris Lewis. Yes, very good uh, to take a look at for there. Into around Thursday morning, uh, could be the possibility of another frost advisory issued from the Mid-South area, and that is something that we are going to be watching again with a lot of interest as we go throughout the rest of the next couple of days. So Thursday morning, definitely want to protect those plants if you've already got them in the ground out there or bring them back in again if you possibly can. Rest of the next 10 days looks like this, and again, temperatures back in the upper 50s by about Saturday, so we are seeing again the possibility of some more problems out there when we get into and around the area of about next weekend, some more showers taking place here. The main threat at this point in time is going to be Tuesday. That's where we're going to be watching out for the possibility of, again, some severe weather. Up and down temperatures, again, we can go very wibbly-wobbly at this time of the year where the temperatures are concerned. As we go through about, say, May, late April, early May, and all the way through about October, September, somewhere in there, that's where we get the stable very boring weather in my opinion, but that's just me talking. So again, we may see again more of those stable numbers coming up again, 80s and 90s and stuff like that as we go through May and June and July and stuff of that nature. But this time of the year, we can wind up with some very up and down numbers as the warm air goes north, the cold air goes south, mixing all that together. And that's where we get those uh, thunderstorm potentials out there. So that's what we're going to be watching here. This is more of an annoyance. This could be more threatening. So again, right here is where we need to be keeping a very close eye on for right now. Thanks to everybody for some great weather pictures out there. James R. Gulledge, frequent contributor on our Facebook page and also on Twitter for some great uh, pictures yesterday. Some sunshine out around Humboldt, Tennessee, doing some lawn mowing out that direction yesterday. TN underscore WX, beautiful view from Carroll County Recreation Lake. Thank you very much for that one. The last twilight of March. Very beautiful view. Some great colors out there in there for the area. And Memphis underscore Tom spending some time at, I hope I'm saying this right, Merle's Inlet in South Carolina. Nice view of the palm trees out there on the coast and a beautiful way to start off Easter Sunday morning. And a great view at this point in time from around the Mid-South. If you'd like to get your pictures on here, we'd love to feature them, but we can't show them if you don't send them. And we do a lot of repeats on here because of the fact that a lot of people send us some pictures and a lot of other people don't. So if you send some pictures in, we'd love to have them on here. But tweet them to me at aonic underscore WRIG3, aonic no underscore necessary on Instagram, WRIG3, and Austin Onic WRIG 
on Facebook. We'd love to have you along. Again, get your pictures out there so everybody can see them on Daybreak and also here on our netcast. So please go ahead and send them in if you do have that information. Now, coming up somewhere in about the next roughly 24 hours, Tiangong-1, the Chinese space station, is going to be what's called deorbiting. It's a fancy word for falling out of the sky, basically. This is a radar picture. This is the animation of what you're taking a look at. The space station is tumbling. It's not in a stable position. It is kind of wobbling its way through on several axes. So as it works its way closer to the atmosphere, it's going to scrape along a lot of that air at the top of the atmosphere. And as it gets into the thicker air downwards, that's going to create more drag. As it does, this is going to give us a very good chance of seeing this thing start to crash back to Earth. Somewhere again later on today, the window is closing. Again, for the forecast on this, it's kind of difficult to show exactly when this is going to happen. But again, the estimate from the European Space Agency is that it's going to be crashing somewhere probably today, maybe early tomorrow morning. Now, do you stand a chance of getting hit by this debris, about eight tons worth of debris falling out of the sky and burning up? Sure, we all do, depending on what happens. But remember that 70% of the Earth's surface is already water, so you stand only a 30% chance of it striking land, and it's only going to be between about 43 degrees north and 43 degrees south. And that's about as good as it gets for right now. Anything outside of that, that lowers your odds as well. And your generic overall odds of getting hit by space debris in general, about one in one trillion. Okay, That's about how much it takes. That's the odds of you getting hit by space debris. Your odds of getting struck by lightning in a calendar year, one in 725. Okay, so that gives you kind of an idea as to what to worry about and not what to worry not and not what to worry about out there. So again, we'll be keeping our eyes on this as the station uh, crashes and burns later on tonight and into or tomorrow morning. And more information and updates at wrag.com/weather. You can also catch my forecast information on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, uh, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. We'll have another update on the forecast and also a little bit of more check on the severe weather potential coming up into the next couple of days. Days tonight on News Channel 3 at 5 and also on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, Todd Demers will be in bright and early on Monday morning for an update on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Got any questions? Please let me know. Uh, anything in the way of suggestions of what you'd like to see on here? Complaints, if you absolutely must, on there. You can email me at austin.onic at wreg.com and be glad to hear from you. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend for an update on what's going on with News Channel 3 weather, sports, and news. And we'll have more tonight on News Channel 3 at 5. Thanks for joining us.